as others, living and dying. Mike has always been the assumed rat within the Vanderlyn gang. From our perspective, he's always been the perfect scapegoat for all of the gang's trouble. Selfish and hot-headed, he's everything Dutch has raised the other members not to be. And given the timing of everything since the very start of him joining up with the gang, the timeline of events and everything going downhill has been a little coincidental. All the way back to the early days of him being accepted into the ranks of the Vanderlyn gang, it appeared he had Dutch's ear, pushing Dutch to increasingly act in ways that are out of character for himself and even the teachings that he praised and promoted onto others, all culminating with his first major misstep in Blackwater, undermining Arthur and Jose's other money-making schemes, resulting in the gang on the run deep into the mountains, with some members killed, captured, or missing. As the game progresses, in Arthur's own words, everywhere Micah turns up, there's Pinkertons, an observation later backed up to be an alleged truth by Agent Milton himself. Micah Bell. We picked him up when you boys came back from the Caribbean, and he's been a good boy ever since. Why well, we would all love to hate on Micah, the guy who pretty much at every turn finds a way to disrespect and antagonize Arthur, a protagonist that is by all accounts universally loved, it's easy to hate the person who is always at odds with Arthur, especially in such an insolent way. While Micah is universally identified as the supposed rat, today I want to explore the idea of what if you wasn't? What if Micah was the perfect person to pin as the rat to ensure the once robust Vanderlyn gang crumbled? from the inside out. And in the background, the real person, the real rat that was working with the Pinkertons and local law enforcement, feeding them information wasn't Micah, wasn't Molly, Sadie, or even Trelawney, names that have all popped up as possible rats besides Micah. No, today we're gonna be pointing the finger at none other than Abigail Roberts. Later turn, Abigail Marston after marrying John in the epilogue. At first, the idea of Abigail being a rat or traitor was odd to me. It was very foreign to say the least. I would have expected someone with a little bit more of a proactive role within the gang, being there front and center with all the bank or train robberies that the gang was staging, or even one of the other women such as Silly or Karen. But after replaying a few select missions and looking at some of the evidence given to us, the theory of Abigail actually being the real rat starts to make more and more sense. On the surface, she's the only mother. The only person who has any sort of chance of a real tangible life outside of living as just an outlaw. She's expressed time and again she wants better for her son Jack and even for her husband John to just be safe. Something that can only be achieved outside of this criminal life they live. Given her personality and position towards this life and the dangers presented to those who live it, I believe Abigail wholeheartedly would prefer John to even be behind bars than out and about, leaving her to wonder where he is and how he's doing. After all, for most of us, the imagination and torment of not knowing something is far worse than the harshest truths and realities. It's what I want you to think about as we explore this theory. With Abigail being hyper-focused on getting herself, her son, and her husband out of this life no matter what the sacrifice, even if that means betraying her old family, the Vanderlyn gang, even if that means placing her husband behind bars and using him as an example to jack the repercussions his life can have. There's a couple pieces of evidence that I want to present to you, and then you can tell me down below what you think about it, and whether if she really was the rat all along. First one is the train robbery on the border of Lemoyne and the appearance of Leviticus Cornwall in the town of Valentine. Pouring forth the oil is a series of small missions where Arthur and John prepared to stage a train robbery in as early as chapter 2. The premise is after stealing an oil carriage, Arthur is to place it on the train tracks so that way the train will come to a halt, at which point Arthur, John, Charles, and the reluctant inclusion of Sean board the train, rob its passengers, and the valuables located in the safes in the back of the train. It's important to keep in mind that this was John's job with help from Arthur. John has the details of the train, its whereabouts, the security detail guarding it, and where the oil wagon is to remain hidden until the day of the robbery. It's all orchestrated by John. Arthur simply helps acquire the oil wagon and of course is added a muscle on the job itself. Neither Arthur nor John openly discuss the details of the robbery they're planning, with the bare minimum revealed to Arthur himself. How do we know Arthur doesn't know that much about this job? Easy. There's some in-game dialogue between Arthur and John that can easily be missed. Little Mr. McGuire, you focus on the baggage car. Grab any valuables you can find. Shoot your mouth, you'll get a bullet back. We're close, Marston. We're at the railroad. Just carry on a bit further. An obvious sign that even Arthur doesn't know the exact spot this robbery is going to take place at. This is a job that was expected to be minimal risk with a train robbery set to take place somewhere remote on the border between two states around the time a new set of guards protecting the train was supposed to be picked up. This means 
little resistance in an area with little chance of witnesses or potential interference from law enforcement. As we know, that's not what happened at all. A set of lawmen unexpectedly turned up, resulting in the four members shooting their way back to camp. By chance, as fate would have it, a small group of local lawmen patrolling the area catches the gang in the middle of the train robbery and decides to leap into action. Thankfully, the members escaped. Regardless of this close call though, it would only be a few days later in the heart of the small cattle town of Valentine that more trouble arose, where none other than Leviticus Cornwall himself turns up and confronts Dutch for his recent train robberies. Robberies that he claims continue to happen. To your good health. Thank you. Vanderland! Get out here! Get out what here the now! You don't know me, but you keep robbing me. My name is Leviticus Cornwall. I am not a man to be messed with by the likes of you. Another surprise visit to say the least. While it's true Dutch and his gang are responsible for at least one major train robbery, what did Leviticus Cornwall mean by keep robbing him? And how did he know exactly when and where Dutch would be? How was it so easy for his men to also capture Leopold Strauss and John? Well, it's easy to dismiss all this as the gang just pushing their luck and with Cornwall being as powerful as a man as he is, surely it would be easy for him to track down a man such as Dutch, wouldn't it? Maybe it was all luck working against Dutch or maybe this was the early signs of someone betraying him. If we go back into Valentine or even head up to Rhodes and buy a newspaper from the Sandini Tribune, after the train robbery you'll notice there's an article within the newspaper that discusses the events of that night. Who are Scarlet Metal Bandits? A train robbery confounds lawmen. Wagon block train officials call for action. The article continues to read, Gertrude Bombach was knitting a hat for her niece when the train lurched to a stop and shouting commenced. I feared for my life, she said. Passengers were subjected to a terrifying ordeal as the train was robbed near the Lemoyne border. Outlaws used an oil wagon on the tracks to cause the train to come to a stop. They then threatened the passengers to give up their belongings. It was then that lawmen, having been tipped off to the robbery, arrived on the scene and confronted the outlaws. With the article mentioning the location and specific details of an oil wagon blocking the train tracks, there's no doubt this was the job done by Arthur and John. The only new detail here was that chance arrival wasn't chance at all, but the consequences of someone informing them of what exactly was happening and where. Given the remote location and how late into the night the robbery took place in, it had to be thanks to someone informing law enforcement and giving specific details of the robbery that was about to commence. With this being John's job, there's no doubt that Abigail, appearing to be no more than a concerned wife or girlfriend, asked John about what was going to happen. With her being in such a trusting position, I fully believe she was the only person besides Arthur and John who had the most knowledge about what was taking place. And even Arthur himself had limited knowledge. But if it was Abigail who tipped off law enforcement, why wait for the job to already happen? Why not tell them before the robbery even took place? Wouldn't it be better to have preventative action here? With an increased presence of lawmen, there's no way that Arthur, John, Charles, and Sean would have took on that robbery. Even during the robbery, Arthur asks how many lawmen are there. And when he hears there's two, then he decides to fight. If it was Abigail, the reason why she waited and didn't tell law enforcement until after John and Arthur had already left the camp was because she didn't have an opportunity to tell them or she basically told them too late removing any action or prevention being taken and instead the course of rescue was all that could be done by law enforcement taking up a plan of intervention rather than prevention or the purpose of it was intentional with a higher law enforcement presence it definitely would have been preventative other lures that made this job so tantalizing to arthur and john of it being minimal risk with high reward would have been completely gone with a high presence of law enforcement it could have also tipped off Arthur or even John that there was in fact some type of rat. With the job appearing to be as tight-lipped as it was, it wouldn't have taken anybody too long to figure out the pool of possible rats, potentially outing out Abigail, or even putting Abigail and consequently John under a microscope. Better than to tell law enforcement either after or work with them to make it appear as if it was a chance encounter. But if that's the case, what about the arrival of Leviticus Cornwall? Well, I can't directly say myself as to what would have caused Leviticus to show up here in Valentine. I highly doubt that Abigail managed to get in contact with Leviticus himself personally. I think that's very doubtful, but if Abigail portrayed the train robbery as something that was conducted, operated, orchestrated, completely ran by Dutch himself, and put John merely as an errand boy or someone doing Dutch's bidding, that would have definitely put John lower on law enforcement's radar. It would have also attributed to going back to, to what Leviticus Cornwall said about Dutch keep robbing 
robbing him, assuming that Dutch actually had the role in the train robbery that was actually ran by John. By Abigail telling law enforcement, this in turn traveled down a line of communication that came into contact with Leviticus Cornwall himself and even the Pinkertons, putting a bigger target on Dutch's head and less of an emphasis on the people that are actually working beneath him. It all makes sense, but the question of why would Abigail snitch still gets brought up. And at this early stage in the game, without looking too much into how Abigail talks in the epilogue or looking at the other pieces of evidence that I'm going to present, if we isolate just this particular event and we try to say Abigail is the rat here. What reason would it be? Well, it could be simple anger, simple spite. Something that's never really brought up is how John left Jack and Abigail. The only person that really holds that anger and disappointment towards John is Arthur. It seems like even Abigail forgives him. Mind you, it's an earlier point in history, so maybe Abigail is a little bit more forgiving there, as whether if we want to admit it or not, women were much more submissive to men at that point in time versus nowadays, but it could have very well been a mixture of her still holding a little bit of grudge and resentment towards John for leaving them, and upon finding out that John had this robbery completely set up she told him it was too dangerous and she wanted him to have no part in it he could have told her to kick rocks that pissed her off set her over the edge and basically went and snitched tipping off law enforcement in a way where well definitely a culprit John hopefully ideally would not be killed but rather be arrested captured and maybe even baited for Dutch to go out and save him it wouldn't be too much to think that Abigail wholeheartedly believed that her life her events or at the very least John's mentality something she probably perceived to be the biggest obstacle would have completely flipped around had Dutch been captured been arrested and her and John would have been allowed to move on happily ever after speaking of Dutch being the one everyone was really after that brings me to the second suspicious encounter necklace for mama sure what a fine young man. And in such complex circumstances. Arthur, isn't it? Arthur Morgan? Who are you? Yes, Arthur Morgan. Vanderlyn's most trusted associate. You've read the files. Typical case. Orphan street kid seduced by that maniac silver tongue and matures into a degenerate murderer. A Fisher of Men, a mission where Arthur takes Jack down to the lake to fish. A small moment of relief for a child that otherwise is locked up tight in the center of the Vanderlyn camp. A retreat that's brought to a swift end with the sudden appearance of Agent Milton and Ross of the Pinkerton Detective Agency. They offer Arthur's freedom in exchange for turning over Dutch. This is the first time we were introduced to Milton and Ross, and while I can't find an exact order of what is supposed to come first in terms of missions, whether it's the train robbery by John or this mission right here, the important thing to note is, regardless of which of these two missions comes first, it's still curious how this plays out. It's been said that Abigail set up Arthur to take Jack, with Abigail aware of Pinkerton's roaming the area, possibly something that was also tipped off by her. Maybe it was an encounter set up by her and the Pinkertons, who maybe even might have been distrustful of her and her intentions so it's a compromise she just gave the gang's general hideout location knew the area would be monitored by Pinkertons and told them to keep an eye out for Arthur and Jack heading down to the river within the next couple of days with this being the first direct contact between Pinkerton agents and Arthur in a way that didn't immediately erupt and say a hail of bullets it's easy to say the encounter served multiple purposes on one hand the Pinkertons can get a feel for Arthur's loyalty to Dutch aware of how useful Arthur is to Dutch maybe they didn't have to kill or even hang Arthur perhaps getting him to turn on his adopted father is a possibility they can exploit. An exploitation they could try to test with Jack being around, as having a young child should help deter both sides into engaging in an exchange of gunfire. Seeing that Arthur didn't cave in, that would mean plan B. Anticipating that when Arthur returned to Dutch, Arthur would be expecting some type of a reaction, some type of plan. They need to do something. Yet Dutch explains he believes that even though the Pinkertons are close by and looking for him, the gang's best course of action is to do nothing. In Dutch's own words, they're just trying to scare us into doing something stupid. While Dutch may have slowly, over time, descended into madness, I don't ever think for one second he was stupid. He may have very well been onto something here. Understandably, as I said, Arthur's energized by the appearance of Pinkertons. He's quick to react and is eager for action. Had Dutch listened to Arthur's energetic words and been convinced into doing something, without a doubt it would have resulted in most of the more capable members leaving the camp, having the women and Jack stay behind. In turn, resulting in a massive shootout between the Vanderlyn members that left with Dutch and the Pinkertons that followed close by, with the result ending with Dutch killed or captured. And thanks to Abigail's cooperation, who was safe back in camp, no one would have been wiser that she was the cause of Dutch's capture or untimely demise. Thanks to her cooperation, some immunity would have probably been given to her, 
her son Jack and her husband John. But as I was saying at the beginning of this particular piece of evidence though, between the appearance of Cornwall and Valentine, the tipped off train robbery, and now Pinkerton's near the camp, these could all be additional convincing arguments to have her use against John, who at this point in the game is seen quite frequently arguing between each other. I still think her setting up Arthur to run into the Pinkertons is the weaker aspect of this theory. The train robbery is very convincing, the chance encounter by Milton and Ross is suspicious, but when you put into context the events of the saint bank robbery and the events that happened in Beaver Hollow, it's not looking too good for Abigail. So let's talk about the saint bank robbery and ultimately how Dutch might have caught on to someone else being a rat. So as we all know, during the saint bank robbery, Abigail and Hosea were sent to be a distraction. They were meant to cause an explosion in a different part of town to draw the majority of the law enforcement away from the bank. So that way the rest of the Vanderlyn members can hit the bank with least amount of resistance as possible. In the middle of the bank robbery, Jose is captured by the Pinkertons and practically publicly executed in front of the rest of the Vanderlyn gang. Abigail on the other hand is said to have escaped. After the death of Jose, the rest of the gang erupts in a shootout trying to escape where it's said that John is captured. Now he's the only member during this entire robbery that's even attempted to be taken alive. Jose is immediately killed, gunned down in front of everybody. Lenny's the other gang member killed in this mission, without a moment's hesitation, and yet it sounded like when John was captured, there was little resistance. There's arguments that Dutch could have saved John. John says that he felt like Dutch allowed it to happen. Dutch saw them grab him. Meanwhile, in Guarma, Dutch says this. So what happened with John in that bank? He survived, unlike dear Hosea and Lenny. The only one they took alive. Why is that, you think? I don't know. I was already on the roof. I didn't see it. And Abigail, I presume she was able to slip away in time. What are you talking about? You know, when I look back at all the chaos of the past few weeks, the apparent superficial chaos, I begin to wonder, maybe, for somebody, this is all going exactly to plan. Now this theory aside, it's very obvious as the game progresses, Dutch and John are at odds with each other. Eventually even Arthur starts having his own moments of doubting Dutch, but John's moment of switching on Dutch can be seen immediately after Jack was taken by Mrs. Braithwaite. From then on, John takes this position of doubting Dutch, his intentions, and even his ability to fix things. He even begins to start challenging Dutch openly as seen on the gang's way to rob the bank of Saint Denis. This is it gentlemen, the last one. Where have we heard that before? What has happened to you, John? You lost all your heart. Seeing how Dutch turns on Arthur, it's obvious Dutch doesn't take too kindly to blatant opposition, especially this being done so publicly by John. Well, I don't doubt for a moment that Dutch had the opportunity to save John from being taken by the Pinkertons, basically what he did later on to Arthur when Arthur was about to be killed by the US Army, only to be saved by Eagle Flies. Dutch, on a personal level, could have very well started to get irritated by John's bold displays of opposition and disrespect. Tired of Abigail and John's incessant arguing around the camp, and maybe even looking to blame Abigail for the death of Hosea, Dutch made a clear and conscious decision to cut them both loose the moment he let John get captured. However, in typical Dutch fashion, he finds a way to justify his actions later by claiming he was postponing John's rescue from Siska Penitentiary because the Pinkertons were just talking of hanging him implying John wasn't going to hang and the gang wasn't in a position to defend themselves for the amount of attention this rescue would bring. Interestingly enough, attention that never actually came. But nonetheless, it makes sense from Dutch's perspective on why he would start acting the way he did towards John and consequently Abigail. But what about Abigail? You could argue the Pinkertons allowed her to get away during the bank robbery, putting a bigger emphasis on the more dangerous members. Dangerous members who wouldn't listen unless they seen Hosea's capture. Maybe she did resist capture, or maybe she offered up as much information as possible about the robbery and how to capture Hosea. All she wanted in return was her and John's clean getaway. However, given Hosea's death and the ensuing gunfight, there's no way in hell she would be able to expect John to willingly vanish with her under the protection of the Pinkertons. The Pinkertons who just murdered the man that helped raise him in cold blood. Her expectations and supposed agreement with Milton were completely thrown out the window the moment he shot Hosea. 
Seeing Al Milton acts in all the cutscenes we see him in, he can also be described as someone who's a little bit arrogant. So it wouldn't be too far-fetched to think that because in his eyes, the attempt to stop the Saint-Denis bank robbery was a complete failure because Dutch wasn't killed or in custody. And because this attempt to stop the bank robbery is considered a failure, he then felt no obligation to Abigail or ensuring John's neck didn't fill the noose tighten around it. Which would then explain why she's so afraid of what John's well-being is like at Sissica and wants to join the rescue party of Sadie and Arthur. Ultimately, she's not even a trained killer or even a member who seems to know her way that well around a gun. She's more of a thief. So what good would she even serve joining Sadie and Arthur? Unless some prison officials would in some shape or form be aware of her discreet cooperation, she would just be in the way more than anything else. So far, so good. We just have one final questionable encounter. That is, when she's taken by Milton at the end of the game. Allegedly, she was taken around camp while with Tilly and Jack. Tilly claims a Pinkerton's plan on putting her on a boat and trying her for murder. I believe this was a final attempt with her cooperation with Milton to try and trap Dutch in the small town of Van Horn. Mind you, pretty much the entirety of the Vanderlyn gang went out to rob this final train. This would have been the perfect opportunity for Abigail to go and try to contact Milton or any other type of lawman to formulate this plan to trick Dutch to come and rescue her. But why would Dutch rescue her? As we've already established, he, he doesn't really care for her or John anymore. If he's not believing that they're the rats are traitors, then at the very least, he clearly doesn't want them around anymore. So why would he come risk it all for someone that he doesn't care about? It's simple, and it's all because of this key right here. Abigail stole the key to Dutch's chest, a chest that is the most valuable, most precious commodity, if not to Dutch, then at least Micah. While it may also be an interesting tidbit of information to know that Abigail is also coincidentally one of the few people that actually know where Dutch's chest is at and managed to actually steal the key to it. Regardless of that, she knows that even Micah would champion some type of attempt to try to retrieve of that key. I mean, throughout the entirety of the game, he talks about the money that they left back in Blackwater. Dutch clearly doesn't care about the money. I think if he really wanted to get that money from Blackwater back, they would have found some type of way to do it. So if not Dutch, I think Micah would have been in Dutch's ear, pushing him to go into Van Horn to try to retrieve that key. I think if it wasn't for Arthur and Sadie and how this critical moment where the entire gang, with the exception of Abigail, who doesn't even know this yet, the entire gang believed that John died. So in this moment, Micah and Dutch, completely unaware that Abigail even has the key to this chest, are talking about leaving Abigail to the Pinkertons ultimately to be killed because she's going to be hanged for murder, leaving Jack ultimately to be an orphan. If it wasn't for this entire interaction right here, the events ultimately would have been drastically different. As we know, the way the mission ends is Abigail ultimately ends up killing Milton and talks about how much of a horrible man he is. And through our interactions, clearly he's a dick. He's antagonized Arthur for the death of Mac. He's killed Jose completely unprovoked for no reason at all and then he mocks Arthur for being sick so it makes sense from our perspective from Arthur's perspective that yes he is a horrible person but from Abigail's perspective with the exception of Hosea being outright killed it would make sense that every dealing that she's had with him fell through the cracks because he's decided to do whatever he wants because she's an outlaw because she's lives this criminal life that he's not obligated to stick to the words and promises and agreements that he's had with her I believe she was bait here I believe this was with her and him working together I think similar to how John's fate worked out with Agent Ross, I think Milton ultimately would have done the exact same thing. Where after taking out Dutch, he would have worked down the line, eventually taking everybody out. But the big thing here is how he said Micah was the rat. I don't think that was meant intentionally to disrupt the gang from the inside out. I think that was more, I think because Milton is so arrogant, I think he wholeheartedly believed that Micah was actually working with them. And that's something that I would love to explore in another video. But for the Abigail theory, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Do you think she was the real rat? And like always, thank you so much for watching. If you want to see a theory or character analysis or anything like that covered in a video by all means please share that down in the comment section in the meantime maybe consider subscribing but like always thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next video